and welcome to Castle Talk, where we talk to writers and creators of today's genre worlds. I'm your host, Jason Henderson, publisher at Castle Bridge Media, and author of the new book, The Serpent's Nest, Young Captain Nemo, due out this March from Macmillan Books. Tonight, we're chatting with Ellen Datlow and Karen Warren about one of the most unusual projects I have come across. It is called Tool Tales, microfiction inspired by antique tools. Welcome, Ellen and Karen. Thank you. Hi, Jason. Thanks for having us. (laughs) <laughs> oh, no, it's it's so fun. And uh, Karen, you and I just talked like a month ago, actually, with uh, with with your new book, uh, your new horror novel. But um, yeah, this uh, is a whole nother thing, a whole new thing. This is a this is a truly strange thing. And, and I want to ask you about microfiction and, and as you flip through about about what Tool Tales is about. But uh, first, if you could each introduce yourself, um, Ellen, I, I know that um, you're an editor of anthologies and I've seen your name like half a billion times. Tell us a little bit about, you, about yourself. Okay. <clears throat> I edit short stories, uh, science fiction, fantasy, and horror, although I've been concentrating more on horror than anything else in the last 20 years or so. I edit, other, uh, I edit also for tour.com, which is the website for tour books. And um, <laughs> I also acquire novellas for their novella line. Um, But mostly, I mean, basically, I edit short fiction up for novellas, and I've been doing it for about 45 years. And I also run KGB um, Fantastic Fiction Reading Series, which Karen's going to be on with Jeff Ford next week, I think, or in two weeks. What is that? Uh, Two weeks. Okay. In the pre-pandemic, it's a live, it's a reading in a bar, KGB. East Village in New York City. And we usually have, we have two readers. Um, We try to get a nice mix together. But for the last, over the last year, we've done it virtually, completely virtually, no in person, which gives us the opportunity to bring people from all over the world. Yeah. Instead of just having people who are passing through New York or live in New York. So this is why we got, we were able to get Karen. Of course, you have to figure out the time frame for everybody. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. I forget what time it's going to be for Karen. It's not going to be too bad. It's 7 no, p.m. No, no, no. But we've had people, we had Usman on, and it was like three in the morning for him. He's in India. Goodness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, we've been doing that. It's, a, it's um, been going on since the late 90s, and it's uh, every month, third Wednesday of the month, and anyone can come and join us. It's on StreamYard, and it's shown on YouTube. So that's, you know, those are the things I do, editing yeah. and and hosting that my mind is racing right now with some of the stories from the the best of collections that you've been involved with in the- oh, and i also I want- have three books coming out this year four counting this wow three new anthologies in addition to this I, coming out in the fall i have um when things get dark which is uh all original <clears throat> stories inspired by shirley jackson's work wow. and the best horror of the year number 13 i hope if i ever hand it in and um, Body Shocks, which is all reprints, and Karen's got a story in that too, which is extreme horror from Tacky. Oh, wow. so, and yeah. you know the cool thing about that story, with Ellen already knows this part of it, but Jason, I'll tell you about it. So that story, A Positive, is actually the first story I wrote deliberately for Ellen. I had seen it. Like I already absolutely adored her as an editor. I loved sure. her year's best, the most inspirational books as a newer writer. I used to borrow them from the library and just read them and just adore every story. Absolutely. And I yeah. read an interview with Ellen um, talking about a revenge anthology that she was putting together. And so I sat down and I wrote a revenge story for her. She oh, doesn't know cool. me. She had no idea. She'd never heard of me. She didn't know anything. And I said it to her and I got a really beautiful rejection from her. Oh. She did buy it. Yeah, which has been a really lovely, really inspirational, uh, helpful rejection mm-hmm. from Ellen for that. I rewrote the story, ended up, selling it, ended up winning an Ori Alice Award, ended up having a short movie made about it, and now Ellen is doing a reprint in her body <laughs> horror book. That Isn't is, that that is great? cool. Horror. Yeah. So it is the story that she's publishing I wrote for her 20-something years ago, 25 Goodness years gracious. ago probably. Yeah. Oh, Isn't that, that is great? really inspiring. That, no, that is, that is really cool. I mean, and, and it strikes me, I mean, your collections, Ellen, aren't they mostly reprints to begin with? In other words, no, no, Karen no, had no. written an original story. Most of my, well, my best of the year are always reprints, but most of my anthologies are originals. Original. Oh, I see. My final Cuts was all original stories of movie horror that came out um, last year, in uh, 2020. Mm. Uh, Echoes was a ghost story anthology, all originals. So I usually do um, one original anthology a year if I can do it. And sometimes I do, I do theme reprint anthologies for Tachyon when we can think of a big enough theme. So I've done several for them, Love Chris, Monsters and Nightmares. And, uh, but you know, yeah, no, I do original anthologies mostly. I would, I would love to, you know, I've, we, 
uh, at Castle Bridge, we started doing original anthologies like about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would love to compare and just, I feel like I could learn so much from you about, about huh. just how to do it and how to lay them out and how to order. You know. <laughs> well, is a, it's kind of an art and then you throw up the cards. I mean, right. it's <laughs> really the stories are the most important and everything else you kind of juggle around. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, Kevin J. Anderson, who does a little bit of editing, had like a formula for how the stories go in. He's like, your second to the best story should be the last, I think, or something. And, uh, and... I mean, it's, it's, and it's also not necessarily the best, but the strongest or what you think is the strongest. What you know. To leave, I mean, to leave I, on a high note, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, or sometimes I'll put a story after the what I think is the strongest as a grace note, if it's a really powerful emotional story. You yeah. might do something a little lighter at the very end or small, very short, you know, but the first story is kind of important. It's very important. Even though you cannot guarantee how anyone's going to read your anthology for all, you know, they may take the first meal and story in the middle. I, but, and you know, I often do. I mean, truly, honest, honestly, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, was some a dust the authors first or the shortest story first or the longest story first. I mean, you know, I do that when I'm reading for the year's best. And they say, I don't have time for a long story. I'll read one of the short ones first. Absolutely. So, okay. I, I, I didn't, I didn't want to, I mean, God, I could keep <laughs> asking you about that, but, but okay. <laughs> but Karen, uh, uh, I know you mainly as a, as a horror novelist and, and I've said, had such a good time talking to you. These sort of evening calls for me and morning calls for you. Yes. Um, so, so tell us about yourself. So I'm an Australian writer, short story and novels, and I write mostly horror and a little bit of science fiction as well. We've been writing for a long time, as you can tell from my earlier story, about how long I wanted to be a published writer and, sure. and now a published writer. So, yeah, always, always wanted to be a writer. And I've got stories and notes for stories going back to, you know, since I was about eight or nine, really. Yeah. Oh, wow. And have just been, yeah, lucky in lots of ways with the chances that have come my way and just was showing, uh, actually have a, been hanging out with an old neighbour of mine, a childhood neighbour, um, who has not, she hasn't ever been in an adult house of mine, basically. And just showing her my wall of books that I've got stories in or that are my own books. Oh, wow. It kind of blows me away. So, like, I kind of go, wow, I did that. So I still don't quite believe that I've that I've done what I thought I wanted to do when I was, you know, from probably the age of 14 quite seriously. Well, anyway, the, that's a the, long way to say who I am. <laughs> we, had, we had talked about your new book, Slights, which I I don't even know if it's actually out yet. I um, think it the, is the, out now, yeah. Uh, and, and that one, the original version... So Slights was coming out, but in fact, it was a, it was a re-edit, slight re-edit and a re-release of a book that you had done first, I think a decade ago or something like that. Yes, right? yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It doesn't seem that long ago. I, mean, I know, it's not crazy. Yeah, it's 11 years ago, 12, nearly yeah. 12 years ago. Well, the last oh. year is a weird, uh, uh, but like, that means I dream. Than that, because I read that book, I remember. <laughs> yeah. I remember Slights. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was just realizing that March 10th, which is coming up, as we're recording this, it's like the first of March. So March 10th, I was at a book signing uh, in Denver and uh, at uh, Tattered Cover and for one of the young Captain Nemo books, right? And, and then, um, and I remember it as clear as day because I ran into this woman who was hosting a, a horror movie thing at the theater across the way and she was walking with a big rock band that was about to do a thing oh wow people all over the place and smell of food and and we got two events across an alley from one another and that was march 10th and then you get up in the morning and it was like it was like 28 days later i mean it's like yes. all of a sudden just like boom and uh, uh, I'll never forget it. And the last year has been uh, a blur. Right. It's been the yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it really is. I and mean, when you say, I'm lucky, I've been able to see. I have a couple of friends who I see pretty regularly. We eat outside, mm. <laughs> and if I didn't have them, I would. I, I mean, I'm really okay, and I. But I'm used to traveling every month almost, and mm -hmm. I don't miss. That much. I mean, I really now I really want to start traveling again in the fall. I hope. But if I didn't have those friends to see in person occasionally, I think I'd go stir crazy. I mean, I see people on video, but I really and I go out shopping almost every day for food. You know, to get sure. out. <clears throat> no. I, yeah, I mean, you know, people don't go out at all or can't go out at all, and I just. Don't they have yeah, no, if you were compromised so that you couldn't go out, it could be it could be so much tougher than I have it, for sure. No, no, no doubt about it. Um, but things have things have moved very strangely. But okay, so so the, the new project though is called Tool Tales, and I'm trying to understand 
first of all, how this book came together. It's not a very long book. It is mostly a pictorial book of photographs that one of you took, and then you have written microfiction. So I want to know so many things. First of all, I want to know <laughs> why these photographs of antique tools happened, and then how you came to collaborate on this. Either of you can talk, or you can talk over one another. I collect antique tools. I've been collecting them for I don't know how long. <clears throat> the, the last tool in our book... I think is the first tool I ever collected deliberately. And mm. I found it at Covent Garden um, Antique Market years ago, like 20 years ago, 20 or whatever. And I loved it. And the guy who sold it me had no idea what it was. And it just was pretty. I just liked it. Huh. It has, it's in size. I, and, you know, it looks like a plier of some sort. Actually, we did find out what it was. I forget. It's in the book. But someone actually found one. I said, oh, it's a blah, 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 blah. I said, oh, wow, I had no idea. <laughs> but anyway, um, I started collecting antique tools, pretty interesting ones. I mean, my criteria are small, weird, and cheap. Yes. I, I mean, I have turned down, I have the ones that, the tools that got away were too expensive. Right. You know? I mean, I a place, I don't think you were with me, Karen, but I went to a place in New York, there was, used to be flea market, and the indoor flea market on 26th Street, and I found, there was a tool, I don't even know what it looked like, but it was really, really pretty. I mean, I don't care what they're for. It doesn't matter. No. It was really, really pretty, but it was like way too much money. It was like over, it must have been like $20 or more, probably a lot more. And I'm thinking, I want this so badly, but I'm not paying 20 bucks or 30 bucks for a goddamn tool. So you want these mysterious hunks of iron that are whatever they are, but you want to spend like $350 or $40. So I collect them. And I guess, and Karen and I are also both antiquers and flea marketers. So I guess, I don't remember this. You tell that, that I visited you and we went antiquing, I guess. Yeah. Like so, yeah, every time, it's been a few times now that um, Ellen's come to Canberra and we always go antiquing in one variation or another. And we have a tip here, which I guess you call the rubbish dump, or I don't know what you'd call it, where people take all their stuff they don't want anymore. And it's, it's sort a of landfill. a shop. You yeah, can I buy guess. landfill, yeah, but it's, what's, but it's rescued from landfill, so you can buy oh. stuff there. So oh, people no, bring their stuff in. Oh, it's brilliant. It's really good. Um, so yeah. people bring their stuff in and it gets sorted out and you can go and buy whatever you want. You can buy old, big, huge computer games or like an old, I've never seen a Space Invader type one, but like the most amazing stuff, doors and <laughs> as many bricks as you'd ever want, and, of course, lots of tools. And so Ellen and I went out there and she bought a tool. I can't remember which one it was. was it we had a lovely time scrabbling because everything's like a buck or something. Like nothing's very expensive at this um, at this area of it. So, yeah, we just – and we really have a shared – we know that we've got a shared love for old objects and things yeah. that have a story in the past and a story in the future and just a real fascination for sins. Yeah, and I so guess – Probably in one of my boredom, you know, in between working and reading, it's like, I need a break. I probably decided to photograph some tools. Yeah. And put them on Facebook. I didn't know where am I going to post these, you know, Facebook, of course. I don't even think I was on Twitter at the time. No. Right. But it's like, okay, I'll post them here and like, see if anyone cares. <laughs> you know? I know, but I think you said to me, I think you and I were talking really? about, I think you'd sent me a photo of your latest one and oh, you said, yeah. oh, I'd put it on Facebook, but no one's going to care. Yeah. And I said, oh, yes, they will. People will love it. And then Absolutely. I don't can't remember which one of us said, how about Karen writes a little story to go each one and that'll, that would be fun. And that's just what it was. And so one by one, Ellen would send me one of her tools and I would just write a crazy little story about it. And then we put it up on Facebook and it really got a lot of interest and people seemed to really <laughs> love it, didn't they? Well, so tool- give me an example, like what, what, I know microfiction means short, short stories, short, short, short stories. Flash fiction. I mean, it's just very, very short. So but can you tell know. me an example from the tools? Well, so, so this, there's this tool. Really, really Holy, okay. So you're holding up this weird hammerhead shark looking kind of pliers thing. <laughs> yeah. And John, will I read the little story out? Building, I'll have guess. Ellen, you read the story out. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay. He was a handsome man. When he danced traditional, wild, subtle, or worshipful, there was nothing he couldn't do. You'd think he was a god, but you don't know what's in a person until you bury them. Leave them 10 years, then dig them up and see what they've become. A good <laughs> man is rotten bone. A bad man stays solid, hoping for a second chance. The god of dance was turned to iron, frozen in a dance move that used to work for him. Wow. And we did find out what that, let me see. We also, at the end, we, ha- we, we did ask people on Facebook, I said, if you know what this tool is, tell us. Mm-hmm. If they were in a, let's see, what, tool was, what number was that? That was number four. So we have number, so why don't you read what number four is? So a rusted iron 
fire about six inches long. No idea what it's spe specifically for, but Wit Pond says, found another one even closer in design, though this one actually has a screwdriver added as well. Generally oh. described as a vintage multi-tool, although I'd say the one in your picture may have been a custom forged job rather than a manufactured one. I believe it. So, yeah, so it's to be honest just... with you, it looks like something my great-grandpa would have used on a fence, to be honest. With yeah, you. right. It, oh, okay. It, 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 yeah. Possibly, yeah. But, it, but I love yeah. it. You know, the, I mean, of course, if you put it sideways, it's not going to look like a little man, but up and down with the... Right. Yeah, down, yeah. Just his little legs... It, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so before, would you be willing? I, I know that, that, you know, it's not a very long book, so but would you be willing to share another one with us? Sure. <laughs> which you, one? Should we... So which, and try to describe what it looks like. Which this is, is so one. fun because yeah, it is. Well, tool number 10 a... is the first one I've got, but it's a long story, so I don't know if you want yeah, to. Yeah, well, like, and that kind of tie you. Tool number 10 kind of ties everything together. Yeah, okay. okay. We'll oh, how about this one? This is a good one. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay what, are, the, what are they? They look like... You'll find out. <laughs> okay. All right. So they're like little metal pointy tubey things. Like they're maybe, what, a, an inch long or something. They yeah, they like look little, like hunks of metal teeth to me, but I still... Yeah. And All right, Ellen, you can you read out. Yeah. You're going to read You're not going to read it? Oh, you want me to read this one? Yeah. You oh, read I'll read it. Okay. <laughs> I ha and, and now this, is, this starts in a way that is also a testament to Ellen um, mm -hmm. because... Oh, yeah, I did a book yes. too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, there's a story of mine that um, you published in Years Best. In fact, it was the first story that she took on mine for Years Best, I think, or maybe the second. And it starts, that story starts, I have a collection of baby teeth. Oh, yes. So this yes. one, this story starts as a testament to Ellen. Mm. I have a collection of beautiful teeth. They aren't my own. I still have my baby teeth set deep in my gums, unwilling to fall. X-rays show no adult ones waiting, none formed, and no one knows why. So I take these teeth and I set them all in silver because they are beautiful but imperfect. <laughs> they show some decay, some decline, like perhaps the people they came from. So I set them in silver and when I find the right dentist, he'll pull my baby teeth and settle these beautiful silver teeth in place. In the meantime, I'll practice my smile because first impressions matter. Oh, my goodness. That is wonderful. <laughs> and here is what it is. Or what we think it might be. Mm. Actually, we didn't have that much information in this one. Four metal teeth. These four teeth were found by me in a local thrift shop that had a bowl full of them, all different shapes. Huh. I was told they're lead, but I doubt that because I see nothing on Google about anyone ever making lead teeth. In fact, I find nothing on Google resembling them. More information would be left. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> so we didn't figure out very much about those. No, but that's brilliant. I mean, it's like, what the heck are these things? You know? Yeah. Then, yeah. They're, they're, they're not I, teeth because they're all on the – they can't be teeth. I mean, they just no, they can't be teeth, you know, <laughs> so they probably come from deep within something. They probably were yeah, supposed probably. to be rotating yeah. of their own, yeah. but, uh, you know, they could be teeth, some sort of ancient <laughs> astronaut dental practice thing. <laughs> um, so, yes. yes. Wow. No, very that good. Is, that is really cool. So so when does, uh, when does Tool Tales – I mean, by the way, if you guys were going to conferences right now, imagine you having a booth. You could sell these things like hotcakes, right? Oh, I know. Because Can you imagine? <laughs> maybe, it would be maybe. so much fun. Hopefully next year we'll be able to do that. Well, and that's the whole idea. Like we just want to go, I don't know. It's just such a fun project. Fun. And... We didn't even think of, we kind of thought of doing a book of it, if some, but we didn't think anyone would be interested. You mm. know, when we finished the, we, oh, we stopped at 10 because both of us got too busy. I mean, it, yeah. it was fun it's like no you have to do oh i can't do it i have no time i have a deadline so we stopped doing them and then so we had 10 and we didn't plan to do anything really um but did. then jerry started um jerry started doing his checkbooks and we thought hey yeah. why not pick why don't we why don't we pitch it at him and see what he thinks and jerry's such a you know he's pretty innovative kind of a publisher and loves to take oh, yeah. on odd projects and that sort of thing so yeah he, he decided Absolutely. he'd do it yeah. Well, that's, but yes, that's really cool. But it would be so much cool. fun if we were at conferences, getting out and selling this well, and reading really bits. And listen, listen gonna... next year you will. All of us are going to be back at, at our booths and we're going to be back slinging paperbacks and, and, and like, so. fish, like fishmongers, basically. You know, <laughs> and, and we're yeah. all going to be back doing that stuff. I will probably see y'all on the road. In fact, well, I'm planning on going to work at convention in Quebec. Oh, my goodness. That's cool. Yeah. Which is early November. I'm plan. I'm hoping. I'm, I was hoping to get to Canberra for the this one, uh, 
there's this one. Oh, Conflux, you know, the Canberra one. Yeah. The NatCon, but I, you know, I have no idea what's going to happen at, that may be too early. I want Next Denver Comic Con to be back to normal yeah. because, you know, that's a massive show, but I, I don't know if this... I've never been to Comic Con. It's just seen, I mean, I've been to the New York one, but not to San Diego. It seems, unless you know people there, it doesn't sound like you can get into anything. It is so huge. Denver, because it's the center of the country, and so, you know, it's a, it's a really well attended. Oh, talking about like, when it's like that, the size of the inter- huh? When does that one take place? Generally June. But okay. again, I don't know if it's going to happen this. I don't know. I mean, I most of us won't even have I, the vaccine yet. Maybe, so. Yeah. I think <sighs> maybe all things might get start getting back to normal ish, maybe. I agree. You know? Next year. Uh, all right. So the book is Tool Tales Microfiction Inspired by Antique Tools, which it is a it is a a not a very long book, but this is fascinating and, and it really puts a smile on my face. <laughs> Ellen good. Datlow and Karen Warren, I, I've just had such a great time talking to you. Thank you so much. Uh, you. When is the book available? Is it is it available now? March fifth. Can you pre? I, I um, Jerry has something on his website now about he had a a link to buy it directly from him, I believe. But you can yes, also you can definitely get- do that. But you can also get on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. April but 8th, March, it says. But yeah, oh, but, okay. March, but March 5th is when you can actually start getting them from him directly. Oh, okay. Well, very good. There you go. There you All go. Right. That's fantastic. Um, so go to IFWG. They've also got, I know that they've got drawings uh, for, and, and it's at IFWGAustralia.com slash treasures. Uh, they enter drawings for uh, copies of, of tonight's book and another IFWG stuff. So, um, uh, Ellen and Karen, thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful and healthy week as we just ride out the rest of this pandemic. I'll, I'll talk thank to you, you soon. Thanks, Bye, Jason. Guys. Great talking I'll to you again. Later. Yeah, of course, as always. Ciao.